Come for the game, stay for the commentary. Minion in, you guys, the release notes for Spear of Salvation just came out. I haven't even looked at these yet. Let's look at these together, all right? For new content, there's gonna be... Oh, looking forward to this. I've been waiting for Ivory Dunes. Okay, let's... I digress. Ivory Dunes is coming out, the new map. Uh, it's gonna have 40 new campaign quests, 24 sides quests, 10 regionals, an invasion. There's gonna be a new invasion, you guys. Like there's any point in still doing invasions. But anyway, uh, two, ti two, two more tameables, the Stray Camel and the Oasis Axe Beak. Cool, so two more rare spawns that are gonna be dominated by uh by the two or three big guilds and no one else will have access to <laughs> ah, i'm being cynical added a new fishing system we knew that was coming fishing areas in south and north oh it's gonna be nodes it's gonna be fishing nodes at least not in pvp zones and a fishing tool merchant in 10 regions new recipes and items new recipes those new recipes will go with the crafting specialization specialization the new crafting special the new crafting levels mastery crafting crafting promotion quests we went over all that we know about this stuff elemental damage to weapons i'm still skeptical about this you guys still still skeptical could be a good thing could be a bad thing elemental damage is not affected by the target's defense some npcs will deal elemental damage some npcs are weak against specific elements and will take additional damage okay but it doesn't make you do less damage to certain things that's what i was that's one thing i was worried about there's still potential for elitism there, like uh, like pugging into a dungeon and having to display what elements on your weapon, and if it's not the right one for the last boss, you get kicked. I worry about these things. And that will remain an issue until they fix that super flawed dungeon kick system. Invasions in general, not just the new one, guys. The goal of defeating elite monsters for most invasions has been separated into an individual phase. Why? I'm guessing this is to prevent rock squatters from just moving back and forth between bosses while other people do the actual work. So now all invasions are going to be in phases. A new lair, Forgotten Swords, we knew about that one. A new dungeon, the Night Spire and Tropic Descent, and a new arena. No abyssals, though. For those of you who are wondering, I guess there's not going to be an abyssal for this. Class changes. Big one, you guys. Big one. For Berserkers, decrease the Fury gain from combo attacks from 4 to 3 and decrease Fury gain from skill attacks from 5 to... Okay, so now you get less Fury. It's going to take a little longer between uh, between rages. And uh, Blood Leech doesn't last as long anymore, so less rage and less healing when you're rage. Gotcha. Rangers, change the effect of Paragrine Strike Knockback and also the passive, basically Ranger Kick is being nerfed, you guys. Instead of there being a Daze effect... After the kick, if you've got the passive active, it's just going to slow your target's movement speed by 25% for 4 seconds. Mages! I remember how much you guys hated the last nerf, so I don't think you're going to be happy with this one. The cooldown time for Firebomb has been almost doubled. 8 seconds has been changed to 15 seconds, so that's Firebombing, you guys. When Arcane Flash has been used repeatedly, the cooldown time for the skill will increase by 5 seconds, so the more you use Arcane Flash, the longer you have to wait before you can use it again. And just like they did with Ranger Kick, the Daze effect that happens after Amplify has now just been changed to decreasing your target's movement speed. Immunity during Meteor is no longer a thing, you guys. You get a protective shield while you're charging Meteor, and if you're hit more than three times, that shield goes away, you get hit, your spell gets disrupted. For Priests, the Smiting Fist knockback effect has been changed to Up or Down. Now, as we know, up or down is not a word in the English language, so we have to assume that means that instead of a knockback, the effect is going to become a knock up or a knock down. A knock up or down, which is <laughs> up first and then down. I don't know. It's not a knockback anymore. It's chosen a new direction. Which direction that will be, we'll have to see for ourselves when the update drops because I have no idea what up or down is, you guys. The new class level system, we talked about this some already, and you can click on this card to get uh, my first take on that. The short and sweet is, in addition to your normal character level, you will also be getting class levels now. After the Gideon fight, your class will level separately from your character. And leveling your class gives you access to new class passive effects. So now in addition to experience points and skill points, we will also have class points to invest in class passive effects. Try saying class passive effect five times fast. 
Unions, artisans, you're gonna be happy about this one. The cooldown time for Artful Disguise has been halved. It's not 10 minutes anymore, it's five minutes. It also heals you for 30% of your health when you use it. And some of the traits have also been improved to be better. That's very nice. It looks like just artisans though. Sentinels and, uh, and ravens are getting the shaft. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They've done some UI improvements, quest changes. The difficulty of a state taming quest has been greatly reduced. This means you guys, not taming has gotten easier, but taming while you're doing that quest has gotten easier. So here's my advice, when you get an estate, and you need to go tame something for that estate, make sure to tame something that you want as a mount because your chances of taming that animal will never be better than when you're on this quest. No waste totem suppression. This one was tough when the servers were more crowded on Xbox and I bet the PS4 people are just having a rage out over this one. I remember how shitty it is trying to compete with 20 other people for like eight totems. It's nice to see that they're reducing the number of objectives and increasing the number of totems. The Crusade quest icon on the map gets a new look so that you can tell the difference between it and invasions. That's awesome. And if your inventory space has become maxed out, that's 200 inventory spaces by the way you guys, and you still have bag pieces left over, there's now going to be a quest that lets you exchange those extra bag pieces for skill points. And if you're wondering where all those bag pieces are, you can click on this card. I've got a full guide on where all of them are. Some NPC changes. The grocer and general goods merchant now have the same inventory. Some general goods merchants have been removed because now the grocer has all of their stuff. Guilds, I like this one, you guys. Guild XP can be obtained from matchmaking by organizing a party amongst same guild members. That means if you do a full guild run and then go matchmaking, you get guild XP for doing that full guild run. That's very cool. And where before, the ownership of the guild was transferred from Guildmaster to next in line if the Guildmaster was absent for seven days, has now been changed to 15 days. The Master of Evasion and Master of Simon Says achievements in the Temple of Lies dungeon has been deactivated. I don't know if that means you can't get them anymore or if they've been taken out completely, we'll have to see. But apparently, either way, you're not getting those achievements anymore. Hope you got them. And then there's some minor changes. Just a bunch of yada yada, some bug fixes. We'll browse through these real quick. Increase the amount of paid bag slots from 100 to 150. You can already reach an inventory space of 110 just by picking up bag pieces around the world. Beginning from round three, a vote to surrender option is available by opening the world menu. I have to assume that pertains to Arena 3 vs 3. If you've already lost twice, you can just give up on the third one. An option has been added to remove the Third Eye Believer's Robes effect obtained during the Tresessa campaign quest, The Great Ritual. That's the Dragon Ball Z effect that a lot of people are running around with. Some of us like it, some of us want to keep it, and it's cool that they're letting us. There has always been a way to get rid of it. You can click on this card here to see how that was done, but apparently now that is just an option that you have that you can get rid of whenever you like. Fix the issue of certain ancient treasure chests being spawned in the incorrect area in Tristeza. What I really want to see is the one in Beoran fix. They used to hover in the air above the river and then they moved it to the side of the river and then put a bunch of invisible walls around it so now you still can't get to it. I don't get it. What's up with that? Red Basin exclusive elixir effects are removed upon exit. So no more using those effects in Red Basin and then carrying them to the outside world. I don't know how big of a deal that is. This is Spear of Salvation in a nutshell, guys. I can't wait. November 19th is when this is happening. I will be there. I will see you guys there. Until then, go be freaking heroes. Minion out.